I love the sport of basketball. Love to play it even to this day. Like to play it on the video games. Like to watch it on TV. Me and my son, we go watch UNLV basketball games all season long. Watching the Boone brothers do their thing. Keelan spotting up from three. Caleb grabbing all the boards. DJ Thomas doing his thing at point as a freshman. Big Rob Whaley down there just beasting. We love that. But as much as I love the sport of basketball, it does not keep me from seeing the things that I spoke about in the last video. And it does not keep me from seeing how not making it to the top league has distorted the view of success for many of our young brothers. For a lot of our young brothers, it's NBA or bust. And that mentality keeps them from taking advantage of all the other things that the game has put on the table before them. See, it's not the game. It's the obsession with going pro that has hindered a lot of our young men's growth and development as people. If we get a scholarship, but we make no attempt to go to the classes, or if we leave school early, even though we're a projected second round pick, it makes me question, are we putting basketball before life? My position for years, even before the NIL deals, have been that if the NBA does not allow them to come out of high school, then they should require them to have a college degree. Let's get rid of the gray area. We don't play baseball anymore. Our inner city youth have been priced out of the game. And again, MLB, draft straight out of high school. The NFL requires players to be at least three years removed from high school, and that gives them an opportunity to get a college degree, as many of them do. So I'm not concerned about other leagues. But now that college players can be paid by universities, collect on NIL deals, and there's an effective free agency in the transfer portal to keep things competitive, I think it would benefit our young men more to stay in college three or four years or however long it takes them to get a bachelor's than it would for them to enter the draft after their freshman year. And there's a number of reasons why. For one, they'll have better development. Heading into college knowing that you're going to be there at least three years allows you to focus on getting better rather than having to prove yourself out the gate. You'll have three years to perfect your craft. Three years of collegiate level strength training, nutritionist, better coaches, more coaches. You'll have time to grow into your body, grow out of your adolescence, mature a bit before having to get on a court and compete with grown men with families for a roster spot. The second thing is it would allow players to grow into having money and not go from broke to balling out of control within such a short time period. That allows them to better situate themselves and their family before the big money comes allows them to be more strategic with the deals they take going forward. A young Magic Johnson might take the Nike deal of 100,000 shares over the Converse deal of $100,000 if he's had money in his pocket the last three years. They can go through the woes of having money, how quickly it goes, how many more people come around, how much that large entourage actually costs them. They can learn how to pay taxes and learn what the true value of that contract actually is. But more importantly, it allows them to make the best decision overall instead of the decision that pays them the quickest. It takes away the false draft projections from shysty agents and the nudges from family and friends to go pro before you're actually ready. The third thing is having the requirement of a bachelor's degree placed in front of you forces you to at least consider your post-playing options before your playing career starts. Now, I know there will still be some who obtain that paper playing degree to just satisfy the requirements. However, there will be some who seriously pursue a degree in accounting or business, something that sets them up for success during and after their playing careers. And the last thing is, staying four years and obtaining that degree not only breaks that paper ceiling, but it also allows these players to tap into that alumni network. Because we all know it's not what you know, it's more likely who you know. And when you're out there on that court, you have a whole lot of eyes that are on you, that become fond of you because of what you've done on that field of play. And even outside of the court, the people that they're gonna meet just going to class, just being on campus. Yeah, you're pursuing a career in basketball. They might be pursuing a career in business or finances or you know, be already set up to go run this firm that's been in their family forever. A lot of people say that's the most important thing about college. When you walk into that firm, that job site, that bank or wherever, they're gonna give you that job. They're gonna approve that application for that loan, for the home or for the business or whatever you need because you're in that network. Now, I hate to take away from the long comment I'm gonna get from Brother Chatelco, breaking down all the statistics, etc. But I have to keep things in perspective as a responsible content creator. 
there's a responsibility of not creating a false narrative. The vast majority of players who make a collegiate team are not pro-level players. There's a lot of players who know college is their last stop and they take full advantage of that scholarship. According to NCAA.org, Division I athletics has a graduation success rate of 91%. Basketball today has a graduation success rate of 86% as opposed to 56% in 2002. So things are on the up and up. But there are players every year that enter the draft prematurely in an attempt to get paid. And everyone around them knows that another year in college would benefit them more. And we rarely ever hear those stories. The player that always comes to mind for me is Joseph Forte. Man, if he would have stayed at North Carolina just one more year, he would have had a much different career. My final thoughts. The average NBA playing career lasts four and a half seasons. It's estimated that 60% of NBA players will deal with financial troubles within five years after leaving the game. That means that if you leave college after your freshman season and you're an average player, you're going to get drafted at 19-20, be out the league 23-24, You'll be dealing with financial trouble at 28, 29, and you have another 44 to 45 years on average that you have to account for. This is where having that degree to fall back on comes into play. This is where having that alumni network to fall back on comes into play. You have to set yourself up for life. Again, college players are getting paid today. They're collecting on their name today. They can sign their autographs for money today. They can go in the store and buy crab legs and go in the store and buy jeans at the proper price today. And if you're really like that, you're still going to have a long, successful playing career at the pro level. But at least you've gotten everything you can get out of your college experience. But the trickle-down effect that that decision will have on our community will be tremendous. You think these young brothers walking around with a ball ain't going to know how to read when they know they got to get a degree to get to where they want to get to? You think they're not going to turn in their homework on time or going to be in school just playing around? No, they're going to take it just as serious as the people who go on to school to be doctors or who aspire to be doctors. They're not in class, you know, with C's and D's. No, they're trying their best. They're trying to learn something. We'll have the same effect on our youth. Let's help them put life before the game. What's the average life in the NBA players? What's the average? Four years. Four years. Wow. Four years. Four years is the average lifespan of an mm. NBA career. Mm. And it takes us five years after that. To go broke. To go broke. Easy numbers again. I, I, I do it like this. You make $5 million, two and a half of that gone. You mm -hmm. got agent fees, probably another 50 of that gone. Mm -hmm. um, you great. got your dues. A lot of people don't know we got dues for dues. the MB, MBPA. So yeah, what? you got dues. So everybody put their money in the pot. So you figure you got 450 NBA players. Mm -hmm. I think the dues is 15 to 20 grand a year. Everybody wow. put it in the pot. That's how we able to get our health care and all of that type of I didn't know that. Then you got uh, you got your personal staff. Right. Financial yeah. advisor is probably 1%. Mm -hmm. Agent at a high number is going to get 4%. Right. Or, but you can negotiate from 1 to 4. Okay. So before you look up, you probably at 1.5 million off of 5 God. with nothing. Damn. And these benzes that we keep talking about in these <laughs> mansions and sh these girlfriends and these Chanel bags. Mm. Before you know it, you you not a millionaire no more. Right. You a high thousand there on paper. You can tell them a you a millionaire right in real life a lot of that pie gone so again and we 17 18 year old kids these are our first experiences mm -hmm. it's gonna take us i don't care what you go to school for it's gonna take you five six years of that experience yeah, it is. to even realize what's happening to you i was i was hey listen man i had a i had a week i bought a ferrari and a lamborghini in the same week and i i rationalized it with my financial advisor and he was like i can't legally tell you what to do with your money but i don't think that's a good decision right and i said it's cool i make a bunch of this shit. <laughs> i did i but i was young what year was this what year do you remember man i had to be 24 i had to be 24 25 years so it was like old. the sixth or seventh season 2012 but no like you have you want to enjoy some of this stuff too yeah, you do. like you, you want to enjoy it and so that's how I, but that's how athletes go broke a lot of people think it's like you just got a reckless spending habit. Yeah. It ain't that we got reckless it's spending habits. We just got crazy overhead. And once the checks stop, mm -hmm. it gets completely different. It's nobody sitting there giving you real numbers because it's coming in so fast. Money coming in so fast. That's just the contract. Like you might have a shoe deal. You might have some endorsements. So mm -hmm. you feel like this shit is going to be forever. It was right. culture shock to me the first week I didn't get a big check from being retired. Mm. Where it was like. Oh, oh I gotta figure this shit out. Yeah, like <laughs> life has begun. <laughs>